going to graph a few um, examples of parametric equations. So parametric equations um, bring in yet another parameter, is what we call it, usually time. Okay, And so x and y, your points from your graph, are expressed um, with regard to time. And so if we want to graph this on a coordinate plane, what we need to do is use our values of t to find x and y to create our points that will go on our graph. Okay, so um, here's our instructions are to create a, a table of x and y values using t equals 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then plot the points generated in part A and sketch the graphs of the parametric equations. Okay, so let's start by doing that. Um, these tables, you can either do them separately or you can make one large table that has both your x and y in it. I'm going to do them separately, um, and then I will write down my coordinates. So I have my parameter t, and I want to know what x value will result. I'm supposed to use t being 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so if t is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, I put those values on the t side. Um, what would x be? Well, we just substitute those values in for t. So if t is 0, remember our x is equal to t squared. So here we would have 0 squared, which is 0. If t is 1, we would have 1 squared, which is 1. If t is 2, that would give us 2 squared, or 4. If t is 3, we would have 3 squared, or 9. And if t is 4, we would have 4 squared, or 16. So there are, those are our values for t and the corresponding x value that we would have. Let's do the same for y. Okay, so here we have our t value, and what would we get for y? Okay, now y, it says, is equal to the square root of t. Okay, so we use the same values. They wanted us to use t being 1, 2, excuse me, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we just put those in. Um, if t is 0, the square root of 0 is just 0. If t is 1, we would get the square root of 1, or just 1. If t is 2, we would get the square root of 2, which is about 1.4. I'm just going to round to the nearest tenth. If t is 3, we get the square root of 3, which is about 1.7. And if t is 4, we get the square root of 4, which is 2. Okay, you could probably say, now how does this help me to plot these points? Um, well, now I'm going to write down what my points x, comma, y would be. Now, you need the x and the y from each t value. So notice my first one, when t was 0, x was 0, and y was 0. So that gives me the point 0, 0. When t was 2 excuse me, 1, x was 1, and y was 1. So that gives me the point 1, 1, when t is 1. When t is 2, x is 4, and y was 1.4. So that gives me the point 4, 1.4, when t is 2. When t was 3, for x I got 9, and for y I got 1.7. That gives me the point 9, 1.7 was the result when t was 3. And finally, when t was 4, I get 16 for x and 2 for y. So that's the point 16, 2, when my t value was 4. These are the points that I'm going to go ahead and graph on my coordinate plane. So I have the point 0, 0, the point 1, 1, the point 4, 1.4, 1, 4. Oh, I'm not quite a half. The point 9, 1.7, so that gives me 9 and 1, just a, over 1 and a half. And then the point 16, 2, 6, 7, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 is right here, and up to 2. Okay, so there, there are my um, five points, and I'm going to go ahead and draw the curve that's there as well as I can with my little pen here. 
Okay, so typically when you're graphing a parametric curve, they would have given us a range of values. They would have said graph for t between 0 and 4. Um, and here I think they just gave you spe specific points, but still wanted the fluid curve. Another thing you typically want to do when you're graphing a parametric equation is to indicate the direction, um, because this usually indicates um, or can indicate um, movement. Okay, and so what that means is you start, you want to know which direction this curve is going. Is it coming this direction or is it going this direction? And you say, well, how do I decide that? Well, we went from zero up to four. So you start at your first point where you were zero, your smallest value you put in for t, okay, zero. So we're going from zero, zero um, towards our next point, one, one. Okay, when t was 1 and then when t was 2, the point. So you're just putting little arrows on here to indicate which direction this is going. And we know it, it started at 0, 0 based on the numbers they gave us and went to 16, 2. Okay, let's do another. So this time we have x is equal to 2t minus 1 and y is equal to t squared minus 2. They've given us a few extra values this time. Um, negative 3, negative 1, 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So I'm going to try to have a nice tall spot. So again, we pick, use the values they asked for t, and then we'll use the equation that x is supposed to be 2t minus 1 to fill in our x value. So we're supposed to start with negative 2, excuse me, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So again, you just plug the given value in for t. So if t is negative 3, 2 times negative 3, which would be negative 6, minus 1 is negative 7. If t is negative 2, 2 times negative 2 would be negative 4, minus 1 is negative 5. If t is negative 1, here in my equation, 2 times negative 1 is a negative 2, minus that 1, gives me negative 3. If t is 0, 2 times 0 here is 0, minus 1 is negative 1. If t is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is, and when t is 2, we get 2 times 2 would be 4, minus r1 is 3, and finally when t is 3, 2 times 3 gives us 6, minus 1 is 5. So there are our values for x. Now let's find the corresponding values for y. So again, we have our values of t. y, it says, is equal to t squared minus 2. Okay, so that's what we'll be doing this time. We use those same t values. We want them in the same order also. So negative 3, negative 2, uh, negative 1, 0, 1, and 3. We're going to plug those in to our y this time. So if t is negative 3, negative 3 squared, or negative 3 times negative 3, gives me positive 9. Minus 2 is 7 for my first value. Next, if t is negative 2, then negative 2 squared is positive 4. Minus 2 is 2. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. Minus 2 is negative 1. If t is 0, 0 squared is 0, minus 2 is negative 2. If t is 1, 1 squared is 1, minus 2 is negative 1. If t is 2, 2 squared is 4, minus 2 is 2. If t is 3, 3 squared is 9, minus 2, which gives me 7. So I found all of my x values and all of my y values. Now I just need to write down what those coordinate pairs would be. Okay, so again, you want for the same t value. So if when t was negative 3, my x was negative 7, my y was positive 7. So that gives me the point negative 7, 7. When t was negative 2, my x was negative 5, my y was 2. So I get negative 5, 2. When t is negative 1, get negative 3, negative 1. When t was 0, my x value, 
came out with negative 1, and my y value is negative 2. So it's negative 1, negative 2. When t is 0, I got 1 and negative 1. When t was 2, my x was 3, and my y was 2. Okay, I need to do our graph here. Finally, when t was 3, I got the point 5, 7. Okay, now all we need to do is plot those points to get an idea of what our parametric graph looks like. So the point negative 7, 7, so I'll put 7 to the left, and up 7. Negative 5, 2. Negative 3, 1, negative 1. And negative 1, negative 2. And now notice my curve is kind of starting to repeat like a parabola. <laughs> this next I have 1, negative 1. And then 3, 2. And then 5, positive 7. So notice I do get kind of a parabolic curve here. Okay, and then again, if we want to indicate the direction of, of motion for our curve, um, we start with our our lowest t value, which was at negative 3. And notice our points are already listed in that order. That's the order we graph them in. So we started at negative 7, 7, and then we went to negative 5, 2. Okay, so our direction of our curve started here and then traveled in this direction through our point. Okay, and then and remember, I, I decided that based on my smallest t value when t was negative 3, that was my starting point, and I moved, as t got larger, I moved towards those other points ending where t was positive 3 at 5, 7. I have one more. Um, it's when you have cosine and sine involved. Um, so we'll go through that one. Um, this time we're given the set of parametric equations that x will be 2 times the cosine of t and y will be 4 times the sine of t. Um, the values they ask me to use are t being 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. While we know exact values for all of these, it should make it a little easier. Um, if you're using a calculator, you'll want to make sure that you are in radian mode because these pi's usually indicate that we're working in radians. Okay, so let me start first with my x's. Okay, so put my t value here and my resulting x, which is supposed to be 2 times the cosine of my t. t values again were 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So we just go ahead and substitute those values in. If, if t is 0, the cosine of 0 is 1 times 2 is 2. That gives me 2 times 1 or 2. If t is pi over 2, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And 2 times 0 is 0. If t is pi, the cosine of pi is negative 1. So I get 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. If pi, or t is 3 pi over 2, the cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. Again, so 2 times 0, again, gives me 0. And finally, if t is 2 pi, the cosine of 2 pi is 1. Again, and 1 times 2 is 2. Okay, so there's my y values. Now let's do our, excuse me, my x values. Now let's do our y values. Okay, so we take our t table. Y, it says it's going to be equal to 4 times the sine of t. You again, use the same t values in the same order that you use them here so that they match up, are easier to match up the pairs. Like I said, you can make this into one big table, um, but I prefer to do it a little separately. It helps me keep things <laughs> cleaner. So here we go. If t is 0, the sine of 0 is 0. So we get 4 times 0, 
which is even. If t is pi over t, the sine of pi over t is 1. So we have 4 times 1, or 4. If t is, or t is pi, so the sine of pi is 0. So I get 4 times 0, or 0. If, if t is 3 pi over t, the sine of 3 pi over t is negative 1. So that gives me 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. And finally, 2 pi. If uh, t is 2 pi, the sine of 2 pi is 0. So I get 4 times 0 is 0. Okay, let's put these together as coordinate pairs. Okay, so my x comma y. When t was 0, x was 2, y was 0. So my first point was 2, 0. My next point, when t is pi over 2, x was 0, y was 4. So that gives me point 0, 4. When t was pi, I got negative 2 for x and 0 for y. So the point negative 2, 0. When t was 3 pi over 2, I got 0 for x and negative 4 for y. So the point 0, negative 4. And finally, when it was 2 pi, I got 2 for x and 0 for y, which now this is repeated, so this graph must repeat as we go um, through the values again. So I see it started with 2, 0, ended up with 2, 0. Let's plot those points. So the point is 2, 0. We'll place it here. 0, 4. Okay, and as I graph this one, I'm going to do the direction of the curve now because um, this is going to circle back around and it might be more difficult. So notice here's my first value, um, and I know the direction of my curve is going from here to here. Okay. All right, my next point after 0, 4 is negative 2, 0. So negative 2, 0. So we're coming back around, and I can see the direction of my curve is continuing to the left. 0, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So down here. And then 2, 0. So I come right back around to where I started. Okay, so the direction of my curve. This is an ellipse. It turned out pretty ugly because <laughs> I didn't have all my points there um, to begin with. And so I wasn't sure of the shape. Um, but there is an ellipse. Um, and the direction of our curve is going to the left. It's like it started here at 2, 0. And again, went to the left. And we determine that based on... Our starting t value was at 0, and then went towards, um, at which gave us the point 2, 0. Uh, and then it went to pi over 2, which gave us the point 0, 4. Okay, so that's how we determined the direction of our curve, and here is a graph.